It takes a long time to plan a cruise and just days for it to be over. So as cruise passengers, we wanna make the most of our days both on the cruise ship and in port. In this video, I'm gonna share the time-wasting mistakes that many cruise passengers make and how to avoid them. Hi there, I'm Ilana from the website lifewellcruise.com. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Now on a recent cruise, I made one of these time-wasting mistakes and honestly, I should have known better. It did actually have some consequences. I will share that and other mistakes and tips that you can use in this video. Now, something I realize is we often talk about how to save money on a cruise, and of course that is important. However, you can always get money back, but you can never get back time. So in this video, I'm gonna share the 12 ways that you can save time both on the ship and in port. Now, before I get started, I did wanna mention that if you like this video, if you find it helpful, informative, or enjoyable in any way, then please do give this video a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Let's get started. Now, the number one time-wasting mistake that many cruisers make is not booking the earliest embarkation time possible. Now, something that you should know is that cruises these days, you do need to actually pick an embarkation time for most cruises that you'll go on. Now, about 30 to 45 days before your cruise line will open up those check-in time appointments, what you wanna do is really snag that earliest time possible. Now, as you'll find out in some of the rest of the tips in this video, it's pretty important to do some things as soon as you do embark on your cruise. So you do want to make the most of the first day of your cruise by boarding early. Now, when you arrive on embarkation day, you will want to do two things. Firstly, you'll wanna make sure that you've already downloaded your cruise line app. So make sure to download this either at home or even at the hotel before you go if you haven't done so already. Usually the Wi-Fi is going to be slower once you do get on the cruise ship. So just get that done. It is definitely going to save you time. And the second thing, I'm sharing this because I actually recently made the mistake. If you are on a cruise ship where you actually have to board the cruise ship to be able to make some of your reservations, whether it is for the show or maybe it is for some of those group fitness classes, well then what you'll wanna do is when you are in the cruise terminal, you wanna see if you can actually log on to the cruise ship Wi-Fi and if you can make those reservations right then. It turns out on the cruise that I was on, many people shared after the fact that I could have actually reserved those group fitness classes and other things right from my app while I was in the cruise terminal before I waited to board. Now, considering that those group fitness classes were sold out by the time I actually boarded the cruise, not only would it have saved me time, but it would have probably added to my cruise vacation as well. The same thing can happen with those shows, so make sure that you book things as soon as you board the cruise or even in the cruise terminal before you get on board. Number two, serious time waster is going to guest services on embarkation day in particular, the first few hours after everybody boards. Now, unless you have a really major issue, just wait until a little bit later on to go and see guest services. Now, this could be later at night, maybe while everybody is in a show or maybe even after the show. Something that you should know about guest services is they're almost always open 24 hours. So you can definitely go later at night, during the middle of the night, or even early morning if you're an early riser. Purchase packages and excursions before you board. Now, one of the biggest mistakes that many cruisers make is they think, you know what, I wanna figure it out once I'm on the cruise ship. Unfortunately, that is going to mean long lines, long queues, and who wants to be wasting their time while they're on a cruise waiting at the shore excursion desk or the Wi-Fi desk? Now, this even applies to if you do get cruise ship Wi-Fi and you think maybe I'll wait to see how the internet is on board before I consider upgrading that Wi-Fi, just do a little bit of research. And if you think you need to upgrade, trust me, do that before you board. Yes, I did make that mistake as well. In the past, I was on a celebrity cruise and Wi-Fi was included. However, unfortunately, I really did need to upgrade to the premium Wi-Fi even to be able to post on Facebook. So something that I needed to do is on the second day of my cruise, I had to waste about an hour waiting in the Wi-Fi line along with many other cruise passengers that were doing the same. From that point on, I've always upgraded my Wi-Fi, beverage packages, purchased any of my excursions before I board my cruise. Now, speaking of cruise shore excursions, this is a time-wasting mistake that you do not wanna make when you get off the cruise ship 
in a cruise port. You do want to plan ahead and do a little bit of research before you get off the cruise ship. Now that could mean planning an excursion with the cruise line. It could mean booking a private excursion. It could mean touring on your own, but you do want to do at least a little bit of research before you go. The worst thing that you can do is get off the cruise ship and try to figure it out while you've got many taxi drivers and guides that are bombarding you. And honestly, it can get overwhelming and confusing. Now, if you book a shore excursion with the cruise ship, the nice thing is it really does have defined times and therefore you won't be wasting any time when you're in the cruise port. But likewise, if you book a private excursion, you'll have somebody meeting you at the cruise port or maybe you'll have a meeting location and that will be all organized before you get there. Now, I do have a little tip. It is very important though. Make sure that you have screenshotted that information for your private excursion or even the shore excursion with the cruise line. Unfortunately, Wi-Fi is not always reliable in the cruise port. So you wanna make sure that you either have your shore excursion information printed out, including your meeting location, or saved in your photos on your phone. Wasting time waiting in lines, lines, and more lines. Now, one thing I hate on cruise ships are lines and queues. And one way to avoid the lines, especially if you are on a cruise ship where there are a lot of amenities or a lot of activities that people really want to do, you will notice that on sea days, there are gonna be long lines. There's really no way to avoid that. However, what you can do, if you are on a cruise ship that has maybe a roller coaster or race cars or surfing pools or zip lines, is plan a day that you stay on the cruise ship when you are in port. Of course, the nice thing is that your cruise ship is probably only going to be about 20% full, so you're definitely not gonna have long lines and you will be able to do that ride or activity again and again. Now, of course, I'm not advocating that you skip all of the different cruise ports and destinations, but if you do a little bit of research, you can decide which days you wanna get off the cruise ship and explore, and which days you want to make a vacation on the cruise ship. Ways people are wasting time when it comes to dining and eating on cruise ships. Now, this actually starts right away on embarkation day. Oftentimes, people go straight over to the cruise ship buffet, and you will see there are long lines. It's hard to find seating a lot of times. And if you research your cruise ship ahead of time, you're going to find some casual places that you can eat. Sometimes you can actually have a meal in the main dining room. And it might be surprising, but oftentimes during breakfast and lunch, the main dining room service is actually pretty quick. Now I know something else that a lot of people complain about, in particular when it comes to open dining or that my time dining, is the fact that they may wait in long lines, especially on the first couple nights of the cruise, waiting for a table. So one way to avoid this is actually to pick traditional times. If that is available, you can pick a six o'clock dining time or you can pick an eight or an 8.30 dining time. At least in that case, you know exactly when your dinner is and you can plan. Now, if you choose to do open dining, just something to be aware of is those peak times. So let's say between 6.30 and seven, it really is always going to be the busiest times. However, if you can head over to one of the dining rooms or restaurants, before about 5.45 or after eight o'clock, you will see it is much quieter and you will get a table quicker and faster service. Now, when it comes to port days, you may have an early excursion and you may need to get off that cruise ship in a bit of a hurry. So something that you might want to do is you may want to avoid the buffet that is going to be pretty crowded and you may want to plan a room service day that day. Now, some cruise ships have room service that is still offered for free. In other cases, there is a delivery fee, but it may still be worth it because you will be saving time that day of your cruise. Now, please let me know if you do order room service on a cruise, whether it is just to enjoy that or if it is as a time saver, please let me know down in the comments below. Number seven, now I know this is not for everyone, but consider adding a credit card to your booking rather than paying cash for your onboard expenses. Now, obviously this is completely up to you, but the thing about when you are paying cash on a cruise is you do have to visit guest services. You have to put money down on your account. You may need to add money at the end of your cruise. You need to go to guest services and you need to settle your account. However, when you do put your credit card on file, then all of your different expenses are going to be charged to your credit card and you do not need to visit guest services before you check out. Now, something I should note is you should always keep an eye on your onboard account. But even then, you don't really need to go to guest services. You can take a look on your app, or if you don't wanna look on your phone, you could usually look on your stateroom TV as well. Now, by the way, if you are planning a cruise and trying to keep organized with all of your list of things to do, and even all of the things that you wanna buy 
budget for on a cruise, I do have the Lifewell Cruise Ultimate Cruise Planner. Now the Lifewell Cruise Ultimate Cruise Planner is a downloadable printable cruise planner that you could use from the moment that you book your cruise all the way through disembarkation day. It has cruise packing lists, cruise budget forms, cruise outfit planning forms, and more. If you are interested in checking out what is included in the Lifewell Cruise Ultimate Cruise Planner, I'm gonna leave all of the information linked down below this video so that you can check it out. Number eight, I think this has happened to every single cruiser, probably more than once, but it is getting lost on the cruise ship and just taking more time than you want to, to find the theater, to find the dining room, to find the gym. It really can be a serious time waster, especially if you are on a very large cruise ship. I cannot tell you the amount of times that I have left my cabin and then gone to the buffet only to find out when I'm on the other side of the cruise ship that it was actually right above my cabin. So something that you should do is on the very first day of your cruise, maybe after you do your e-master and after you eat some lunch, is go ahead and explore the ship and really take note of where some of the different locations are on the cruise ship that you might go to frequently. So that might be the main dining room, that might be the gym, that might be the spa, that might be the kids club, of course the main theater, the adult pool, you get the idea, but take note of those things so that you can get to those places more quickly when you are on the cruise ship. And if you are on a particularly large cruise ship, try to even get hold of that cruise ship deck plan before you go and take a look at where those places are in relation to your cruise ship cabin to familiarize yourself. By the way, for those who wanna find their cabin door quickly, something optional to do is you might wanna decorate your cruise cabin door with a little sign or even go all out. Number nine, this one has the potential to not only save you time, but honestly to save you some frustration and some aggravation. So if you have any future cruise credits or onboard credits, whether they come from your travel agent or the cruise line, or any other means, something that you'll wanna do is print out that proof before you go on your cruise, or if you don't wanna print it out, just simply save your email in a little file or screenshot it, save it in a photo album. But the point is that it can take usually a day to have all of those onboard credits to show up into your account. So don't panic if you don't see them the first day. But by day two, you unfortunately might need to go to get services to figure it all out. And if you have that proof ready, it is going to be much easier to get that settled quickly. Now I have a total of 12 here. However, I am saving my last two because they do cost a little bit of money. The rest of these tips are all free. But number 10 has to do with a cruise port hotel or even a post cruise hotel. If you are spending time in your embarkation city, something that you wanna do is do not try to save money by booking a hotel that is far from the destination or even the cruise port. If you do wanna take time and visit an embarkation day city, for instance, if you are in Rome or you're in Barcelona, or even if you're in Miami or Fort Lauderdale, something that you wanna do is choose a hotel that really is within walking distance or a short distance from all of those tourist attractions that you are interested in seeing. Unfortunately, many cruisers make the mistake of booking a hotel that is cheaper but that is far away and then they waste time either on public transit or they waste time and money getting a cab or an uber to where they want to go number 11 now this does cost a little bit of money but it will save you time on the first day of your cruise and it may give you some benefits that you really like and think are worth the money so you may want to consider purchasing royal caribbean's the key which is an early embarkation program you do have other benefits as well or carnivals faster to the fun these are ways that you can get on the cruise ship before other people and of course that gives you access to the cruise ship and everything there is to do and book before other people. Number 12, consider booking a stateroom or a suite that comes with some extras that are going to save your time when it comes to dining, booking shows, and more. So if you do book a suite on many cruise ships, you're going to be able to have access to a concierge or to a butler that's going to be able to assist you with any of the reservations that you need. You may have access to an exclusive dining room and that's going to mean that dining is going to be not only quicker, but you're not going to have to really worry about reserving most of the time. And on many cruise ships, you're going to have the ship within a ship concept. So you're actually going to have access to an outdoor area, either a pool or hot tubs or a place to lounge where you're not going to have to worry about trying to find a lounge chair as they are 
are going to be more plentiful in that area. Now, there are other cabins or ways to book that are maybe just a little bit more expensive than a regular balcony cabin, but you are going to have access to some exclusive dining rooms. So this includes Celebrities Aqua Class. You will have access to Blue. You might wanna book with Holland America's Club Orange, or you may want to book with Princess's Mini Suite Reserve Collection. All of these options, of course, do cost a little bit more, but they have preferred dining, and this can save you time and offer you even a better dining experience on a cruise. Now, I'm gonna leave all of the information about the Lightwell Cruise Ultimate Cruise Planner linked down below in the description of this video. I would love to hear from you. What are the tips that you have to save time on a cruise or even let me know what are some of the mistakes that you've made that have wasted time on a cruise please let me know if you've done any of the things that i have done i hope that you enjoyed this video if you did please do give it a big thumbs up i really do appreciate it and please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already bye for now and happy cruising